Happy Sabbath, everyone. Turn to the person next to you and say it's too early to sleep. And then I want you to turn back and say, please answer the preacher. We're going to try it one more time. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. To God be the glory. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I love this place. I said I love this place. Amen. South England Conference is the place to be. Amen. Amen. You have an amazing president in Dr. Emmanuel Ose. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, my brothers and sisters, I'm not talking here just to uh, maybe uh, aggrandize myself, but I had the opportunity when I wrote my dissertation on compassion, fatigue, and burnout in pastoral ministry had the opportunity to find a definition for leadership that I've used throughout my ministry thus far. And it says that leadership is an influential relationship. Now my brothers and sisters, what I realize with your president is that he is not a taskmaster. He works with the people and for the people. Somebody say amen. And so I want you to put your hands together for the wonderful president you have. <laughs> Brother President, I would like to thank you and your team for the invitation, and I've enjoyed every moment. Brother President, uh, Elder Paul Lee is amazing. Is amazing. Uh-huh. I, th I, I would have been happy if I had known him when I was about to get married to sing the lead for me. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> I'm happy to see our union president here, Pastor Sweeney. Union presidents are normally very busy moving from place to place. But to see your president of the union can take time off to come and just sit with you tells how much he loves you. And to preach in front of Pastor Sweeney is no easy task. <laughs> Could somebody take him out of the room for a minute? <laughs> We're happy to have you, preacher. And uh, to my friend and family, Dr. Thomas, thank you so much for all you have done for me. Brothers and sisters, I will not keep you long. I said I will not keep you long. Amen. I'll say it one more time. I'll not keep you long. Amen. Tell the person next to you, that's all right. He can sabbath this from sunset to sunset. which means he can preach until sunset. Somebody say, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. My wife, my wife, Bernice Kwashi McKenzie, she sent her love. She's presently driving to New York, a four hours trip, so my son can preach there. And so remember him in your prayers. My mom, told me that she will be looking this morning. Uh, she's presently wheelchair bound, but we know God will move in a mighty way. Amen. I asked the Lord what to speak on this morning. And the Lord told me a number of weeks ago, he said, and this is no fairy tale, the Lord spoke with me. Lord said, well, on Monday night, I would like you to preach on the topic on the retention, hold on, no compromise. On Tuesday night, hold on, God remembers. On Wednesday night, 
Hold on. Don't what everybody? Don't be moved. On Thursday night, hold on. All hope, all is not lost. And the Lord said, it may be the last time you're going to preach to many folks here. Don't beat up the saints in the morning. Just leave them with something to carry on. Somebody say amen. amen. Leave them with hope. Leave them with words of encouragement. And so the message this morning is entitled, Hold on, God will turn it around. Amen. Say it one more time, hold on, God will turn it around. Tell the person next to you, I don't know what you're going through, but hold on, God will turn it around. I invite you to stand with me and turn to the book of First Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 30, 3 0. And we're reading from verse 1 to 6. Do you have it, everybody? They told me that South England water is the best water. I preached all week without drinking water, but if I could have one just here would be good. Just because it's South England water. First Samuel chapter 30. And we're reading from verse 1 to 6. Help me read somebody what it says. And it came to pass. When David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David, everybody say, but David. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Somebody say hallelujah. Every head bow and every eye close. Father, speak to your people today. Somebody is discouraged. Somebody is stressed. Somebody is depressed. Speak to your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated.
my brothers and sisters, a number of days ago, I read a story that caught my attention. The theme of the story, the theme to be conveyed, discouragement is a terrible disease and a very powerful weapon in the hand of the enemy. I'm going to read the theme of the story before I tell you the story one more time. Discouragement is a terrible disease and a very powerful weapon in the hand of the enemy. A number of things, I'm reading the story for you this morning, a number of things went terribly wrong for a lady. And she became so sad that she cried herself to sleep. As she slept, she saw a vision where she was in a big marketplace. As she moved around the market, she found a particular shop called Mr. Devil's Shop. She said, wonderful. The devil has a shop in this place. She went in to see what the devil was selling. And found on the shelf anger, hypertension, diabetes, and the list went on. Mr. Devil, she said, what is the most expensive material in your shop? He brought something out on which was written discouragement and said this is the most expensive thing when I get Christians to be discouraged and to worry I send fear into them and from there all kinds of other things will go in brothers and sisters as I leave you today I want to say to you, don't become discouraged in the Christian walk. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I said keep your eyes on Jesus. A personal testimony, Brother President. I had reached a place in my life when I was reconsidering ministry. I wanted to leave ministry. What was the reason? I was studying at a certain college doing my bachelor's degree in theology. I was not the rich kid on the block. Neither would I consider myself the sharpest knife in the drawer. I swept the streets cleaned the washrooms, took care of tables so as to have the funds to make it through school. There was a particular professor who for some reason did not appreciate me. Can anybody, can anybody here identify with the preacher? This professor for some reason did not appreciate me, but my brothers and sisters, I'd made up my mind that I just want to get through school. And I remember doing the homiletics class, my final homiletics class with that professor. He said the class must preach extemporaneous sermons. My brothers and sisters, I began preaching from since the age of nine. And so extemporaneous sermons would not have been a difficult task. 
stood up in the class and preached the extemporaneous sermon. The professor did not even comment on the message. The other two students stood up and they preached and they were great. My brothers and sisters, the professor announced these two are the only ones that preached extemporaneous sermons today. One of the students who preached jumped up and said, can't be, Professor. Dr. McKenzie, Pastor McKenzie David then, he preached an extemporaneous sermon. The professor looked me in the eye and he said, well, these two were so good that I could not have even remembered that. My brothers and sisters, he gave me a bad grade. And I walked out of that class that day and walked down the streets that I swept for four years. And I said, God, I don't think I want ministry anymore. Because you see, after the class was over, I went to the professor and I said, why would you do this to me? He told me in clear words, nothing good will come out of you. Are you listening to the preacher? And I walked out and walked down that road and I was broken. I said, I'll never preach this gospel again. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? But then something said to me, you need not be discouraged. You've got to come to the place of understanding that when these things come your way, they must propel you to move on. My brothers and sisters, I went back to my country, Guyana. I'm going to preach just now. Could I finish the story? I went back to my country, Guyana, and started to pastor, enjoying ministry. Left, went to Andrews University, completed a master's degree, a doctorate. Got picked up in Northeastern Conference. And one day I got a call from the said university. I said, I got a call from the said university. The president asked if I can come back to the university to serve as one of the vice presidents. And the pastor of the college church. I said to my wife, do you think we should take the call? She said, let's go and see. Are you listening to me? We jumped on the plane, went down to the university. On the Sabbath, I stood up to preach. And at the end of the sermon on the pulpit, it was whispered in my ears, you just have to say yes and the job is yours. I walked off the pulpit and guess who met me? Is anybody listening to the preacher? I said, guess who met me? The said professor. He said, Doc, can I carry your bag? Can I, can I carry your jacket? You can't walk with this jacket around. Let me just hold it for you. <laughs> I stopped by here today to tell somebody, you need not be discouraged on this Christian path. You got to keep your eyes on your prize. And the Lord will make your enemies your footstool. <laughs> I want to tell somebody the time has come for you to encourage yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Discouragement will come. I said discouragement will come. Trials will come. But don't lose your hope. Encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible tells us. Bible tells us the story of David. Every one of us, there are times in our lives when we experience situations or moments 
that we find it difficult to handle. And we stand in need of strength. Strength to endure. Strength to hold on. Strength to press forward. Strength to continue our walk with God. In 1 Samuel, David was in such a situation. Is anybody listening to me? I said in 1 Samuel, David was in such a situation. David and his men left their wives and children in the camp and went out to fight the Philistines. It was a heated battle. I said it was a heated battle. But God, but God gave them the victory. Is anybody here today in a heated battle? A heated battle with cancer, a heated battle with a health crisis. Is anybody here today in a heated battle with finances? Is anybody here today in a heated battle on your job or even in the church? I have good news for you. If you hold on to Jesus, he will give you the victory. David and his men went out to fight the Philistines. It was a heated battle, but God gave them the victory. On their way back to their camp, I said on their way back to their camp, they were praising David. I heard them saying to David, 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 you are a mighty warrior. David, David. We are happy that we are your soldiers. David, David, we long for you to remain our leader. But the Bible tells us when they got to their camp, they had the greatest surprise ever. While they were away fighting the Philistines, the Amalekites, I said the Amalekites, invaded their camp captured their wives and children, took their livestock, burnt their tents. David was now in a terrible situation. His very men were now bitter and angry because they had lost their families and were now planning to stone David and killed David. <laughs> How can folks praise you one moment and the next moment they turn on you? I stop by here today to tell somebody, folks will praise you when you are doing well. But the very moment, the next moment, they will turn on you. Do I have a witness? Some folks will love you when you are on the mountaintop but will trample on you when you are in the valley. Some folks will love you when you have status and position, but the moment you lose them, they will treat you as though they never know you. Some folks will be your friends when you have money and you have status, but when you lose everything, they will turn on you. No wonder my mama told me, you never know your friends until you know your enemies. I want to say that one more time. You never know your friends until you know your enemies. The Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, that David's men who just praised him, were now planning to stone him and kill him. David was broken. I said, David was broken. David felt stressed. David felt down. But the Bible tells us he refused to remain in that state. 
In other words, he refused to remain broken. He refused to remain crushed. He refused to remain depressed. And so the Bible tells us he encouraged himself in the Lord. The Hebrew says that the word encourage is too limited. The Hebrew says he strengthened himself in the Lord. In other words, brothers and sisters, the Hebrew is conveying that the reason David in crisis could have strengthened himself was because he was in the Lord. It therefore means that if he were not in the Lord, he would not have been able to strengthen himself. The Hebrew is therefore saying that the source of our strength in crisis is not in things, is not in people, is not in ourselves, but in the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. I said the source of our strength in crisis is not in things, is not in people is not in ourselves, but in the Lord. It therefore means if we are to receive supernatural strength in crisis, we've got to fasten ourselves to the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. I said you've got to fasten yourself to the Lord. Somebody here today, I don't know what you are going through, but I stopped by here today to tell you, if you are going to make it, if you're going to be encouraged, if you're going to be strengthened, if you're going to receive your blessing, you've got to fasten yourself to the Lord. Uh, Jacob in wrestling with God he said Lord I wouldn't let you go until you bless me. The angel shifted his tie. David, J Jacob was now in pain. He was limping. But he said, I'm going to hold on and won't let you go until you bless me. The angel said, the break is coming on. Let me go. What the angel was really saying was simply this. When you hold on to God, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, I said joy, comes in the morning. He held on to God. He said, I won't let you go. And then God said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because you wrestle with God and prevailed. Tell your neighbor, if you're going to make it in crisis, you're got to hold on. You can't let go. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible tells us David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want to say it one more time. I said the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, brothers and sisters, David did not depend on others to encourage him. I said David did not depend on others to encourage him. He did it himself with the Lord. Can I tell somebody here today, there are some things in life you can't depend on others to do for you. You've got to do it yourself with the Lord. And don't tell me you are just one person so you are insignificant because I have news for you. One with God is a majority. I said one with God is is a majority. Do I have a witness? Yes, I do. One man, Noah, built an ark. One with God 
is a majority. One man Moses parted the Red Sea. One with God is a majority. One woman Esther stood before the king. One woman Anna Jarvis invented Mother's Day. One chemist William Perkins discovered the art to mass produce color. One man John Wycliffe translated the Bible to English. One man Martin Luther nailed 95 theses. One man Martin Luther King Jr. led the civil rights movement. One woman Rosa Parks sat on the bus. All men are equal. One little black boy, Barack Obama, he said yes we can and became the first colored president of the United States of America. One man Jesus was nailed to the cross. They laid him in a grave. Then came Sunday morning. He got up. I am the resurrection and the life because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. One with God is a majority. Don't tell me you're just one person. If you're wrapped up with God, you are a force to reckon with. Sister White says that's the weakest sinner upon his knees is a force to reckon with. And so my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And so the first point, to hold on to God so he can turn things around. You've got to fasten yourself to the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. The second point, Dr. Thomas, uh -huh, to hold on so that God can turn things around. You've got to remember. I said the second point. You've got to remember the Lord. The Hebrew tells us the reason David in crisis could have encouraged himself was because he remembered his past experiences with the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the first point, fasten yourself to the Lord. The second point, remember the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, listen to this carefully. It is said that if you have no memory, you are just adrift. Because memory, memory anchors you to the past, interprets the present, and charts a course for the future. I want to say it one more time. I said memory uh -huh, anchors you to the past, interprets the present, and charts a course for the future. What are you really saying, preacher? Well, when the Bible says, remember the Sabbath, what God wants to do is anchor us to the past so we will know that we did not come from baboons. We did not come from monkey. We came from the handiwork of a living God because the Sabbath reminds us that God is creator. Memory interprets the present. The Sabbath. Each time we look at the Sabbath under attack, we will understand that the reason Satan wants to get rid of the Sabbath is because he wants to discredit God as creator. You gotta know to interpret the present. And then memory charts a course for the future. When we get to heaven, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship before God. I said memory anchors you to the past, interprets the present, and charts a course for the future. A church in crisis, 
you've got to remember God in three ways. I said you've got to remember God in three ways. This is still on the, the subtopic, remember. You've got to remember God in three ways. You've got to remember when. You've got to remember how. You've got to remember why. <laughs> Uh huh. I said you gotta remember in three ways. You gotta remember when. You gotta remember how. You need to remember why. In other words, you've gotta remember when God came true for you in the past. I said you must remember when God came through for you in the past. David felt like giving up, but then David remembered. When God delivered him from a lion, when God delivered him from a bear, when God delivered him from a giant, and David said, he's the same God yesterday, the same God today, and will be the same God forever. If he delivered me then, then he can do it again. Tell your neighbor, I don't know what he delivered you from in the past, but he can do it again. For he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You got to remember how. I said you must remember how he delivered. Uh, David remembered how God delivered him through supernatural power. It had to be supernatural power. For what he had was insignificant for his battles but then he placed it in God's hand I said then he placed it in God's hand you see I've come to real realize it's not what you have but whose hands it is in I said it's not what you have but whose hand it is in. I put a running shoes in my hands. It's just a running shoes. But put it in Usain Bolt's hand. And it will give you a gold medal. I put a cricket bat in my hands. And it's just a cricket bat. But put it in Brian Lara's hand. And he will give you 400 runs. I put a basketball in my hands. And it's just a basketball. But put it in Michael Jordan's hands. And it's six championships. Can I go a little higher? Put clay in my hands. And it's just clay but put it in God's hands and he will form the human race I put a rod in my hands and it's just a rod but put it in God's hands and he will part a red sea put five loaves and two fishes in my hands and it's just a snack but put it in God's hands and he will feed a multitude put a sinner in my hands and it's just a sinner but put it in God's hands and it is a sinner saved by grace I put water in my hands and it's just water but put it in God's hands and he will turn it into wine put nails in my hands and they are just nails but put them in God's hands and he will save the human race it's not what you have, but whose hands it is in. David said to Goliath, you come to me with swords and shield, but I, but I come to you in the name, somebody say in the name, but I come to you in the name of our God. Uh, can I tell somebody here today, when you start to remember, you will realize that once you face anything in the name of Jesus, it's going to be all right because there's power in that name. I said there's power in that name. It's a saving name. There's no other name under heaven whereby we must be 
saved. But the name of Jesus, it's a healing name. The great physician now is here. The sympathizing Jesus, it's a conquering name. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's a sweet name, sweet name, their name. There's no other name like Jesus. It's a name above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I stop by to tell you, face your sickness in the name of Jesus. Face your financial crisis in the name of Jesus. Face your job issues in the name of Jesus. Face your family problems in the name of Uh, brothers and sisters, you've got to remember when. You've got to remember how. Then you've got to remember why. I said you must remember why. You've got to understand the reason why God delivers. Is to give him glory. Woo. Now you did not hear that. I said the reason God delivers is for his glory. Mm -hmm. You believe God give you a degree to walk with your head lifted high and leave the church behind? You, you believe the Lord bless you with a husband mm -hmm. or a wife for you to give up on God? You believe the Lord bless you with that position or with that status in the church so you can be proud and lift it up? Well, I have news for you. The reason God bless you is to give him the glory. I said to give him the glory. Because the truth is, had it not been for the Lord on our side, we will not be here. Jesus said to Peter, he said, Satan wants to sift you out like wheat. But I, I said, but I, I said, but I, I'm praying for you. In other words, the only reason you are still here is because I am praying for you. Can I tell South England Conference, the only reason you are still here is because the Lord is on your side. Oh, I'll tell your neighbor, my job is in trouble, but I'm still here. My bills are high, but I'm still here. The doctors give up on me, but I'm still here. Racism is rampant, but I'm still here. I've been knocked down, but not knocked out. I'm still here. The devil is on my back, but I'm still here. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? His grace, I said his grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living each moment because of you. I stop by to tell you, give God the glory. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you're going to hold on to God with whatever you're going through and watch God turn it around, then you've got to fasten yourself to the Lord. Then you've got to remember the Lord. There's another point. Uh, you've got to make up your mind. Never to give up. I said one more time. I said you've got to make up your mind. Never. I said never to give up. David was now surrounded by enemies. A few hours before, he was surrounded by folks who were loyal. But now the very folks who praised him 
had no plan in his death. And there was David. In other words, David was surrounded by enemies. Is anybody here surrounded by enemies? No, 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 no. You may not know what I'm talking about because you believe everybody is your friend. Let me tell you, I've learned one thing. I've learned one thing uh, since I became a director. Not everybody who praises God for your accomplishments is really praising God. Are you listening to me? Somebody may be, may be hugging you and, and kissing you like Judas. As though they are for you. But, but they're just waiting and praying for you to come tumbling down. David was now surrounded by enemies. But David will soon understand that even though enemies may surround you, God still delivers. Somebody say hallelujah. I want to tell somebody here today, when you are wrapped up in Christ, brother president, even your enemies become your blessing. I said, when you are wrapped up in Christ, even your crisis becomes your blessing. Because God never allows any temptation to come your way that you are not able to bear it. And what God does with every temptation, he takes you to another level. And you don't even know it. Somebody say hallelujah. So I've learned to thank God for my enemies. You know, the other day I read a story. I said I read a story. Uh, the story is this. In the Northeast, I said in the Northeast, they transport what they call codfish. You know codfishes? They would transport codfishes from the Northeast to the different parts of the world. And cut fishes became a major part in the Northeast economy. Somebody listening to the preacher. But brother president, the folks started to complain about the shipment of the fishes. They complained to the producers in the Northeast. They said, these fishes, when they are shipped to us, they are mushy and they lose their flavor and their texture. If you don't fix it, then we will stop buying cut fishes from you. The Northeast got anxious and worried. They sent and called the experts. They said, tell us how to ship these fishes so we can keep their texture and keep their flavor. The experts said, listen, you are doing it the wrong way. You have to stop killing the fishes to ship them. You got to start shipping the fishes alive ship them in their own habitat and so what they did they went and they got the water that the fishes survive in and they shipped the cut fishes to the different parts in their natural habitat but when the fishes got to their destination they discovered that the texture was still lost the flavor was still gone and the folks sent back and said to the experts, we're giving you one more chance. If you don't get it right, we will buy cut fishes from somewhere else. The experts studied it again. And then they went to the producers and they said, we have the solution. They said, listen, you got to ship the fishes alive. You got to ship them in their natural habitat. And so they put the fishes in the tanks of water. And then they said, you got to ship the fishes with their enemies catfish and so they gathered some catfishes and they threw them in the tank and my brothers and sisters from the time the cut fishes left the northeast those catfishes chased after them they hadn't a chance to rest they hadn't the opportunity to lay down they had to keep on the move when the fishes got to their destination the folks said how come the texture is the best we ever had. How come
come the flavor is the best we ever had. And the experts said it's because of the enemies. I stopped by here today to tell somebody you've got to come to the place where you write your enemy a note. Thank you. Because every time your enemy is on your back, he will keep you on your knees. Every time your enemy is after your life, he will keep you praising. He will keep you reading. He will keep you preaching. He will keep you trusting. He will keep you obeying. He will keep you in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, you can't give up. And the Bible tells us when David and his men arrived and saw the tents gone, when they saw their families gone, David and his men fell to the ground. His men lost all hope. I said they lost all hope of seeing their loved ones again. But the Bible tells us, I said the Bible tells us that David did not lose hope. What David did, David went to the Lord in prayer. He said, God, you've got to give me a word. I need a word from the Lord. What must I do? And the Lord said, David, this is the word. All hope is not gone. I'm going to turn things around. Somebody say hallelujah. The Lord said, David, I'm going to turn things around. I'm going to make those folks that are now cursing you turn around and thank you. I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. I'm going to turn things around. I stopped by here today to tell somebody, God is about to turn things around in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. I said God is about to turn things around in your life. That is the word for the day. Just hold on to the Lord. And so David said, God, should I go after the Amalekites or should I stay my ground? The Lord said, when you talk to me, you just spoke to me. It's now time to act. Don't you understand that I'm not just a talker. I'm a God of action. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Uh, David jumped on his horse. His men in their chariots. They started to run after the Amalekites. Uh, when you start to move, not everybody can keep up. But you got to keep moving. Somebody say hallelujah. I said somebody say praise the Lord. The soldiers started to drop out, but David kept going. I stopped by to tell somebody, when folks start to drop out, you ensure you stay your ground. Because the race is not for the swift, but for he that endure it to the end. When folks start to criticize you and discourage you, you better encourage yourself. You may look defeated today, but victory is tomorrow. Somebody say hallelujah. And David went after the men. When he got to them, I said when he got to them, he did not only get back wives. He did not only get back cattle. He got back more. Somebody say hallelujah. I said he got back more that he had lost because of one thing. He never, I said he never gave up. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm gonna close with this story. I'm gonna close with this story. My brothers and sisters, uh -huh. uh, there was a man, a marathon runner, Akwari. Akwari was from uh, Tanzania. Akwari was sent to run the Olympics race in Mexico City, brother president. He ran the marathon. The stadium was filled. Everybody watched a 
Aquari. I said, everybody watch Aquari. He got to the starting line. Started the marathon. The marathon went out of the stadium. The other events in the stadium started and continued. At the end of the day, the marathon returned. It was the last finish for the evening. When the marathon came in, everybody stood and clapped in appreciative applause. My brothers and sisters, they sang the national anthem and then folks grabbed their baggage and their, their, their personal belongings to leave the stadium. But as they got up from their seats, suddenly an announcement came. Could everybody remain in their seats? We have a situation. Folks got nervous and started to look around. What is the problem now? When they looked, they saw coming from the entrance, they saw flashing red lights. They knew those were the lights of the ambulance. They saw flashing blue lights. They knew those were police officers. And folks got worried. But then when they looked between the ambulance and the police, they saw Akwari limping along. Is anybody listening to me? I said they saw Akwari limping along. And when he got to the finish line, Akwari dropped down and the medics grabbed him. What happened to Akwari? Well, when the race got out on the streets, Akwari had a terrible accident. He was hit down. He broke bones. He battered his body. Blood was flowing from his head to his feet. They let him, let him over to the medical center. The next day, the reporters got to Akwari and they said, Akwari, why did you stay in the race? Akwari, your bones were broken. Akwari, the journey was rough. Akwari, you are battered and bruised. Why you stayed in the race? Akwari looked the reporters in the eyes and he said, you believe my country sent me all these miles to just start a race? They sent me here to finish it. I want to tell somebody, you believe God called you to just start this Christian race? He called you to finish it. Life will get rough, but finish it. Times will get hard, but finish it. Folks will talk your name, but finish it. Your enemies will drag you in the sand, but finish it. Sometimes you'll be up, sometimes you'll be down, but finish what you started and soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Somebody say hallelujah at this moment. He sits at the right hand of the Father God but soon and very soon he's going to take off his priestly robe and put on his kingly robe. He will say to angel Gabriel gather the angels together it is time to go and bring my children home somebody say hallelujah angel Gabriel will push heaven gates open and then Jesus somebody said Jesus then Jesus will take the lead suddenly a cloud about the size of a man's hand will appear coming from the constellation Orion and as the cloud gets closer it's a band of angels and seated on that cloud is a man named Jesus right on King Jesus right on no man will hold thee back right on King Jesus right on the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we who are alive and remain 
shall be caught up. We shall be changed. This mortal shall put on immortality. No more cancer. No more diabetes. No more leukemia. No more credit cards. No more car notes. No more house mortgage. No more church election. Somebody say hallelujah. We will journey to heaven. Sister White says it will take seven days because we must spend the Sabbath. Sabbath is a happy day. A happy day. I love every Sabbath. Then after the Sabbath, some angels will go on. And then we will continue on. And when we get to those party gates, I read, Brother President, that there are 12 gates. I said there are 12 gates. And I heard the gates have names on them. Tell your neighbor, don't be discouraged. Don't step out of the race. There's a gate with your name on it. Somebody say hallelujah. And when we get to those gates, the angels will open the gates. And Jesus will say, carry on, my children. Carry on. And then Jesus, I said Jesus, I mean the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Jesus will then step in. And one side of the angels will shout, open the gates. Let the King of Glory come in and the other side will shout who is who is this king of glory and then everybody will shout the lord the lord the lord strong and mighty and then jesus will pull out the divine register i said he will pull out the divine register and he will call you by your name hey brother abraham are you here and abraham will say present sir b brother budu are you here c sister christopher are you here d pastor david are you here somebody say hallelujah and when we hear our names we will shout thank you jesus thank you jesus you went into the strong man's house you defeated the devil you set the captives free and today we worship you somebody say hold on he will turn things up I want to pray for somebody today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the struggles you have. But the last thing I want to leave with you is hold on. God will turn things around. Let's all stand to our feet. Somebody here, where's the praise team? Help me. Somebody here, I want to pray for you. But today we have baptism. I must make this call. Somebody here today. You've not yet given your life to Jesus. You've not yet. You've not yet gone down into the watery grave of baptism. Today is your day. Today Jesus is saying, come. Hold on to me. Hold on to me, come. I told you the other night about my father. I begged him to accept Jesus. In the restaurant, I took him to lunch. And when he got up from that restaurant and stepped out on the sidewalk, he dropped down with a heart attack and died. My brothers and sisters, the devil will tell you that you have time. But I beg you today to come as you are. You don't have time. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Today is your day of salvation. Come. Is there somebody here? You have not yet given your life to Jesus. And you want to say, Pastor, I want to get baptized. Come. I want to pray for you. Don't look at the soul. I want to pray for you. Come. Come just as you are. Leave your seats wherever you are and come. Praise team, could you help me? Is there one more person you want to give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Come to the altar. Come. I'm going to make another call now. Somebody here, you were walking with Jesus. You were walking with Jesus. But you lost your way. And you want to say, Jesus, I'm coming home today. 
up, leave your seats and come. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Come. Leave your seats and come. Leave your seats and come. Is there, is there any such person here today? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody sing this song. Come. I want to pray for you. Come. All to Him. Hallelujah. Come. Come for prayer. Is there anybody here? You want to get baptized today? Come. You want to recommit your life to Jesus today? Come. I will ever. And trust. Somebody come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another person? Come. Is there another person you want to say yes to Jesus? Come. Don't think about anybody. Just come. Come as you are. Come. Come. Jesus is calling. Come. Will you surrender all to Jesus today? Come. I surrender. Come. Is there one more person? Is there one more person? All to thee, my blessed Savior. Is there one more person? Come. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender. Let's pause a while now, everybody. Listen to this final call. This may be the last time you may hear me. This may be the last time you may hear God speaking to you. I don't know. Nobody knows what tomorrow holds. But I want to pray for somebody. Listen to the prayer. Listen to the prayer. Something is going on in your life. Or in your family's life. Or in somebody that you want to stand in the gap for. It may be a sickness. It may be a spiritual warfare. It may be a financial crisis. I don't know what it is. But you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray that God will turn things around in my life. Leave your seats and come. Leave your seats and come. Today's your day of deliverance. Could we sing now like we, like we mean it? Hallelujah. Leave your seats. You want, you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. You want to say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to pray for you. Come. Come. Hallelujah, Brother President. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come. Come. I don't know what's going on in your life. But you want to say, God, turn it around. Turn it around. Come for prayer. Come. Come for prayer. Come. Now with power, I surrender. I Come. surrender. I surrender all. Sing it like you mean it. Come. Sisters, this is my last sermon for this camp meeting. If we don't meet again on earth, I beg you, let us meet in heaven. Hold on to Jesus. Don't compromise. Hold on to Jesus. He remembers. Hold on to Jesus. Don't be moved. Hold on to Jesus. All is not lost. Hold on to Jesus. He will turn things around. Our union president, I'm going to ask you to pray for God's people today. Pray for God's people. All heads are bowed or eyes are closed. 
Heavenly Father, your spirit has moved wonderfully in this place. Something has already happened in the lives of your people. There have been those who have given their life to you today. We praise you. There have been those who have come forward to say, Lord, we are struggling. But the most expensive thing that the devil has, we're handing it back. Because we found something even more precious. His name is Jesus. And we're thankful, Lord, that this day, the chains that held us, the prison bars that trapped us, the discouragement that has just imprisoned our lives, all of this through your spirit has been broken. We declare because of Jesus Christ, we are free. We are just so thankful that we can leave this place, leave this encampment with a different spirit, with a different attitude, knowing that Jesus is our everything. And so we praise you, Lord. We have been encouraged. We are encouraged. We will drive down south with a different spirit, with a different attitude because your spirit has granted us something that we didn't even realize when we came on Monday. So Lord, we thank you for your manservant. We thank you for using him and, uh, and, and speaking to him to speak this word of encouragement into our lives. We're thankful that we see the world oh so differently because of your spirit. We're thankful that we can look on our enemies and praise you for them. We are thankful that we are encouraged. Encouraged. We're not giving up because we're soon going to see Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word. Thank you for your spirit. Let everybody say, Amen.